Hi, and welcome to Senior Flicks. Uh, if you didn't see our last episode on this new segment that we're doing on entertainment, uh, I want to re-welcome Nathan. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, I'm very happy to be back. Yeah, uh, and on the last episode that we did together, we were talking about um, some of the entertainment in the area. I don't want to say films specifically, because we're talking about watching things in the theater, but we're not talking about specific uh, uh, movies. We're talking about some documentaries. We're talking about some of the art programs that that the theater had to offer, um, and uh, and I wanted to go into it with a little bit more detail. But can you just remind me uh, where is it that you're coming from? Yeah. So I work in marketing at Cineplex. Mm -hmm. So I work specifically in a lot of niche programs like international cinema and event cinema. Yeah. So I've got a close eye on all the all the alternative programming that you're going to find at Cineplex theaters. Great, great. You got your you got that. Uh, your boots on the ground for 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 that operation. Yeah, my That's boots great. on the ground and my head in the clouds sometimes. <laughs> nice. Last time we were talking, we were discussing uh, live at the Met Opera in HD. Yep. And, and the National Theater Live program yes. that Cineplex is offering. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So uh, the Met Opera Live in HD. Uh, so this this program is broadcast from New York, mm -hmm. um, from the Metropolitan Opera. So one of the world's most foremost, you know, one of the most renowned mm -hmm. uh, opera companies in the world. Yeah. Which uh, I don't know how long they've been running, but they've they're an institution. They've yeah. been, they've been there forever. I mean, you it's know? broad. It's basically Broadway. It's Broadway, baby. <laughs> So um, they, they like to play in each season, which runs from the fall through the spring. Okay. They like to do a mix of new contemporary operas and old classic operas uh, because they want to be, you know, they want to foster the art of opera moving forward mm -hmm. and, and share it with a new generation. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm probably in a younger demo in terms of who is really into the opera, mm -hmm. but opera is such a great program for everyone because it's incredible artistry, mm -hmm. uh, just the technical prowess of the of the opera singers and how they use their diaphragm and, and their whole body yeah. to project those notes is really incredible. Yeah, it's very impressive, for sure. I mean, I can barely get a get a squeak out when I'm singing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the uh, the productions that's coming up in, in this winter is actually Nabucco, which is by by Giuseppe Verdi, one okay. of the famous Italian composers. Mm -hmm. So this opera was composed in 1841, right at the beginning of Verdi's career. This was one of his first big achievements, and it was first uh, actually produced in 1842. So it's a little older than me and a little older than you. It's, it's you know, it stood the test of time is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be Daniele Caligari uh, conducting, starring a handful of well-known uh, opera singers. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is really cool because it actually takes takes from Second Kings, Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Daniel in the yeah. Bible. Yeah. Um, it's actually about the Jews when they were in captivity in Babylon, mm -hmm. and it follows King Nebuchadnezzar, which is a, a translation of Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, great. There, that's where the, the end sound yeah, I know comes that. from. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's really fascinating. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it just follows the story. I think it's an amalgamation of, of three of the different pharaohs at the time and how uh, the Jews overcame adversity at that at that point in time. So very cool for me because I'm fascinated in in the Bible and in history. Yeah. Uh, so this is very cool. It also features the famous chorus of the Hebrew slaves, uh, which is a very well known uh, opera piece that you hear on classical 96.3 all the time. Okay. Okay. When I'm when I'm driving with my parents, sometimes that's one just comes on and yeah. we all like, oh yeah, there's yeah. that piece again. I find it interesting. Are most of the operas that uh, you're you're seeing for the Met? Do you, do you find that they're always updated and uh, like aesthetically they're looking um, more modern, or do you find that it's it's kind of like half? A, like I'm like I'm just curious. I remember um, you were showing me some clips from from the new Carmen that's mm -hmm. coming out, which I'm I'm sure you'll mention, uh, and and it's all been modernized to look like almost like a like a, a New York, like Bronx yeah. experience on the streets. Like, do you find that's happening with most of them or, or are they gonna look kind of like traditional opera as well? I think it's a mix between the two. Yeah. So again, they've got revivals and restorations of old uh, old pieces. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, Carmen, which is, you know, is one of the most famous operas, mm -hmm. some of the most well-known pieces in, in all of classical music, really. Mm -hmm. um, that one is actually being updated to be set in a modern, modern times, almost like in a, in a gang yeah. scene. Okay. Whereas Nabucco, 
uh, partly because of the, the historical setting, isn't being updated. But there are others like Romeo and Juliet, which is playing later in the season, mm -hmm. which also looks like it's going to keep the contemporary setting. Mm -hmm. But even when they update it, it's still the great old classic music. Mm -hmm. It's just putting a different coat on it, you know? And sometimes it's really interesting to see an old favorite in a new light. Mm -hmm. Even if you haven't seen it before, it's very cool just to, see, uh, just to hear this old classic music because a lot of these pieces you'll know. Like you, you, you may not know where it came from, but you hear it and you go, oh, okay, so that's where, uh, that's where that piece came from. And you're getting to hear this piece mastered for the theater with, you know, like 12 to one surround sound stereo. Um, it's, gonna, it's gonna sound incredible. Absolutely. You, you're gonna really get to soak in the music. You're gonna be, I don't wanna say shaking, but you're just gonna be <laughs> soaking in just the yeah. beautiful, beautiful music. Shivering in your boots, not shaking Absolutely. in your boots. Shivering in your boots. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, there's plenty of opera between now and and until the spring. So a lot of cool programs to check out. Okay, so we've we've talked again about the Met Opera, and remind me, the other program that you mentioned last time was the National Theatre Live, right? Yes. So okay, right. so again, this is uh, th these are plays that are filmed live on stage in yeah. Great Britain at the National Theatre, okay. um, and they're really incredible. They've got uh, they've got a production coming up uh, called Dear England about about. Uh, a football team and about the coach that, looks looking. very fun just incredible it was really cool to see how they transformed the layout of it it feels it doesn't feel at all like a normal no, stage no it feels like they've turned it into a soccer pitch yeah there's my my english terms coming through yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, but the really exciting program that they have uh, this winter is Vanya. Okay. So, uh, of course, this is an adaptation of Anton Chekhov's classic Uncle Vanya play mm -hmm. about, you know, a, a, as, as usual, a disgruntled Russian um, a professor. <laughs> There's a few of those. There's a few of those around. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's a play about how he has to deal with, with hardships in his life and, and coming to terms with the, with the difficulties of existence. Mm -hmm. um, but, but this is really special because this is a one-man play. Wow. So you've heard of Andrew Scott. Yes. He's, he's having like, Andrew Scott. He's having a moment these yeah. days, you yeah. know? I'm trying to think. Andrew Scott uh, famously played um, against Sherlock in the yes. in the show starring yeah. Benedict Cumberpatch, who you mentioned has also done National Theatre Live. Yeah. Um, he played Moriarty, right? That's right. Incredible uh, performance. Wonderful yeah, performance, yeah. and I mean, he's been in Fleabag, the TV show. Love that one. Which he's fantastic in. Which was also a one-woman show at the National Theatre Live, right? That's right. That's, that's right. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a connecting. A lot of one-person yeah. shows, yeah. but whereas Fleabag was written for one person, mm -hmm. Vanya was originally written for an entire cast. Mm -hmm. So Andrew Scott is playing every single character in this production. Wow. wow. I haven't seen it myself, but all the reviews have said that this is a phenomenal performance. Yeah. It's just spellbinding what he's doing up there. Yeah. I mean, it's hard enough doing one thing at a time. Imagine having to play all the different characters in a, <laughs> in a play. I don't wanna, I don't wanna think about that. It's, yeah, it sounds, yeah, it's too much, too much. And what I, what I love about Andrew Scott is he's such a, uh, an expressive performer. Mm -hmm. You really see all the emotions that, yeah. that play across his face. He's got those amazing micro expressions, yeah. and he really lets you into the heart and the soul of all the characters that he plays. Yeah. And he's got a great accent to boot. Amazing accent. The, the play has actually been transported from Russia to Ireland, and wow. the main character is no longer a professor. He's a filmmaker, of course. Oh, really? It always has to be a filmmaker. Yeah, it's always <laughs> got to come back to the art. So that's playing uh, this winter in Cineplex theaters. Vanya, I'm I personally am very excited for yeah. this one. I'm I'm going to try and go see it. Yeah, we got to go. We got to go check okay. it out. <laughs> well, before we go, yes. Um, just remind me again. Uh, we're talking about these programs, winter 2024. Where is it that uh, our viewers can go and, and watch these wonderful programs? Yeah, so uh, so event cinema uh, titles tend to play at select locations. Operas play a little bit wider, mm -hmm. but some of our national theater live performances will only be in certain select theaters. Okay. So it's likely that they'll be playing in Ajax and Eglinton, which I believe are both pretty close to Shepherd Village. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can always go to cineplex.com slash events mm -hmm. uh, to look for show times, for more details, and to get tickets. Okay, okay, great. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for coming back and talking to us a little bit more about uh, about all this special entertainment that's on. It's been a pleasure. Happy to be back. Yeah, yeah. And to our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please remember, if you enjoyed the video, to like it. Uh, if you like the channel, hit subscribe. And if you want to uh, stay current to our videos that are coming out in the future, hit that little bell icon to get notifications when they come out.
Nathan, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Cheers.